I'm at a gypsy. Like just, and then our experience of getting dressed like down in the the clubhouse and then bust. Yeah, up. so paint it, paint the picture for people then that that uh, didn't get to go. So like we basically rock up. It's a an old golf course which ironically got <laughs> shut down for noise. Yeah. Uh, only like a couple. It was only open for like a few days. Um, and then yeah, so this bus basically takes you from the hotel to this golf course you get changed in the clubhouse and then yeah you get changed in the clubhouse you don't see the bikes and like and by the way you have your own your own filmer yeah you have two photographers you have a chassis technician you have a mechanic and then you have an engine tech yeah an engineer that like worked on building the bike yeah with you the whole time yeah i'm like what like and then you know you you basically get dressed you get back in the, the van and you go up what like a half a mile to the track and you, you, and you they they get your reaction to see the bike for the first time and you know, you, you look at it and then you're mic'd up, you're mic'd up the whole time as well. And you basically can produce for a guy like yourself. Um, I'm not going to put my, le- my, uh, experience on your level, but to be able to get all the content and produce your, cause your manpower is a lot of your issue. Like yeah, there's only yeah. one or two, you have three or four guys on your staff, Yeah. but to have this whole crew and they can put your shot list together. So for me, I'm so usually work, I'm working with like swap moto or, a, a subcontractor photography guy that leads me, Hey, get that shot. Yeah. Hey, yeah. do that. All of a sudden this element, you have full reign to create whatever you want. So yeah. it really shows that experience show who actually had curation of the content. Right. Yeah. And mine was very square box. Like, cause it was just me by myself. And I'm like, didn't, I didn't think outside the box. I'm like, I need a whip shot. Well, you didn't really know what you were getting into either. I need a whip shot. I need a berm shot. And, and then I need a piece of camera talking about it. But now that I look at other people's stuff, I'm like, that was rad. They did that. That was cool. They did that. It, it really highlighted what they want to do is get people's natural feedback. Yeah. Yep. And um, like I'm very traditional moto guy. I've been trained up by swap Dom and in, in a good way. Um, and, and Alex Gobert's very much the same at moto online, but then, you know, a, your crew is very forward thinking. So you guys took a completely different angle and it was really cool to see how your content correlated to my content. Yeah, yeah. And then to ride the bike, I was like, you know, I, a lot, you know, I, I've been watching a lot of all the content coming up, people like talking about, Oh, you only did how many laps, right? Yeah. And, and yeah. at first, if you had told me I'd only ride like, you know, 20 laps on the electric bike, I'm like, man, that's not going to be enough to know. Dude, like yeah, you know straight away. Eh? Straight away, like <laughs> I, I, like I'm sitting on it, I get on it, and I'm like, hey, can you put this thing like the training wheels out? Like I was making a joke. Like, can you get an electronic training wheels to come out so I learn how to ride this thing right? Yeah. And they detune it to like go as fast as like a 12 inch Stasic. Like, oh really? Bull. I'm like that's, <laughs> that's so. Sick. I didn't like, get to do that. Yeah, so I was like, they're like having a, have some some fun with me, and then uh, they're like, all right, go out and right away. I was like. I thought I didn't know how to do, I, you know, you go left and you triple yeah. double. And like, I tripled that first or second lap gone through. And I was surprised. You could still hear the engine, like the engine yeah, changed yeah. Zip, instead of like wrap you, or you're like, you're like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. you still hear the electric. So yeah, the two laps in, take a break and then give feedback. And I didn't mess with, um, I didn't do the handbrake. Yeah. I really wanted to learn like what just the, what it was like what, for you to ride. Right. Yeah. So I yeah. kind of kept it pretty simple, but we changed mapping to change the suspension. Like I added engine brake. Oh yeah. Cause yeah. the fork was like the balance felt pretty good. And like I didn't know we were going to ride the uh, combustion chamber bikes to compare. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, man, how am I going to know? Like really know. And they're like, Hey, we have a gas gas 450 for you to ride. I'm like, what? Yeah, so after eight laps, I think we had on the electric bike, they got us on a combustion yep, chamber bike. Yep. And I think there was five journalists or five media sources that were there, total, including me on the day. I think three of the five stalled the combustion chamber bike. Straight suffered. away. Straight yeah, away. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, one yeah. guy stalled that happened, all that. that happened a bunch to, to when we were there. Even Seb was testing the Yamaha at the end of the day, and then he fucking stalled it straight <laughs> away. And was like, what are you doing, Jake? Yeah. So, like, I was laughing, just laughing at these dudes. But that gave me, like, I, I was kind of clicking the bike around, the, the chassis. Um changing the tuning of the, the engine brake and to get the balance right. But I'm like, am I still going in the right direction? Then I got on the gas cast 450, which that's my daily bike. I still yeah. have air fork. It's not everything. Su- yeah. Everything's pretty stock, man. You it's got like, like clamps. Yeah. A pipe. Yeah. But yeah, for the most all. part, it's like standard. So yeah. I'm like, 
I don't even have an ECU. So my production, my bike's pretty much production. I love my bike. Like, yeah. When I get on my bike, I'm like, my bike's sick. And I could barely ride the thing. Yeah. I could barely <laughs> ride it. So like in eight laps, how can you go from pretty confident and pretty natural to all of a sudden that foreign that you grew up riding that blew my mind. Like I was like, but then it helped me with timing. Like some of the jumps, like yeah, that, that timing. Some of the jumps were hard. They were blind. Yeah. You couldn't see shit. Yep. And like, they look similar to the other Almost ones. Almost jumped directly into the hay bales. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you know, the true. first downhill. Yes. Yes. I was like, oh yeah. fuck. <laughs> yeah. So you did the noise. We didn't go up. <laughs> yeah. You can still like hear it. You can still hear it. Like you still know, but um, man, I just, I love that they were. So it, did the engine brake help with the balance? Sorry, did yeah, you add more and then it just I put added, a little bit I more added on the like fork? Twenty percent. Yeah, and then it was too much because the motor didn't feel as good, but the fork felt better, so I split the difference. Yeah, yeah. And it was a game changer for me just with the balance. Yeah, like it, it wasn't as free. Um, and then then I started I worked on the shock like a little bit of high speed, but it was pretty close. Like yeah. I'm like this feels pretty good. Then I went to the gas gas, which I know what it does good and bad. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, this thing's better production. Like it's, it's <laughs> yeah. better. Like like those what those doubles at the bottom of the hill. Yeah. They had like G out hooks in them. Yeah. And I think because that the the Stark Varg has like no centrifugal crank movement. Yeah. That it doesn't wallow. I never had the bike go side to side on me. No, nah, no, nah, I didn't either. Not one time, but what was, what was gnarly? If you're a rever like Barsha, you could like MX unleash backflip that bro. Because you go to infinite gear, you, you go could to in- never. <laughs> you should of- never over uh, like go over the handlebars of a stock bike no. because I did. It was the triple. You know what you said? The you mm-hmm, go mm-hmm. left triple. I went triple. <laughs> And then like just revved in the air for like legit no reason. Like it was just like a habit. habit. And I went, Whoa, and I, like in the air, it oh. felt like fucking mad skills. Yeah. Cause you think about it when we panic yeah, rev yep. third, fourth gear, our wheel speed will only It'll go cap out at whatever that X is. speed. No, this is infinite. The, it was, That blew my <laughs> mind. Eh? Like there's, that was one of the cool things was I, I actually didn't really fuck with the bike. It is funny. Uh, I've said it before, but I, <laughs> the fork, I rode the bike and I was just, there was so much going on the first couple of sessions that I did that I was just like trying to take everything in. So I wasn't really changing anything on the bike. I was just like, I was honestly just like trying to experience it. And I had the handbrake. So there was a bunch of shit. And then, but I was like, oh, I'm feeling it in my hands. And before I went to Europe, I'd been doing jujitsu lid like literally every day for months so i was fucking fit and uh my hands were sore and i was like this is not right so then we went on the gas gas which i was completely fucking dog shit on <laughs> and then and i'd just been riding a gas gas which I had is sammy's, an epic motorcycle yeah i had like, sammy's bike you ride ktms yeah, like, yeah, like you know yeah. Yeah. And, but i got off that and i was like okay the forks are, are no good on the varg and then I said to Seb, I was like, oh, I don't want to be that guy that says the forks aren't working properly, but I honestly don't think the forks are that good because the gas gas forks felt better. And I know for a fact <laughs> that those forks aren't better. And then anyway, it turned out that they had two different, they just fucked oh. it up. So they had like one. Look at you with the spot on feedback. Yeah. yeah so dude. I, and everyone, the boys are giving me shit too. They're like, <laughs> shut the fuck up about your suspension. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, so then anyway, once that happened, it, I've never felt so comfortable on a bike. It was crazy, That's, dude. So did the the harmonic noise, like of the everything, when you know you like land and it goes boosh, because you hear everything. Like yeah, you hear the plastics yeah. resonate. That's probably the only bit I didn't like, yeah. if I'm honest. Yeah, it, it gives you a sense of like an old feel. Yeah. And I think it'll get, I'm assuming it'll get better because all the fitment was prototype, like the plastics. The plastics, that's the, re- they, it was making a real harsh noise yep. because of the plastics and the forks as well were just too hard. Like, you know, yeah. when you just get that Yeah, Yeah, that that, sound. it gives you the illusion yeah, that yeah. it's like, yeah. there's no comfort, yeah. you know? And that's where, if I didn't have a reference, which, dude, kudos to that crew for giving us a reference piece. Yeah. The, the um, gas gas was harsher, like on the slap down landings. Yeah. And I was like, okay it's just noise correlating to harshness it's not yeah, a yeah. but that's that's something they need to improve on like a, de- yeah. a detonating like in a, i just think that as soon as the plastics because they were 3d printed they were did they tell you that they had like seven fenders break on the first Dude, day so i almost f- flew off the back of it were parallel to the double you know the long and low double after the triple like you know you do the triple yeah double, yeah, down. yeah 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 like if you go back after this i'll show you uh 
on my Instagram, I put the little video of like the drone and I jumped with a scrub it, pushed my feet down and my feet slipped off the back because the thing was so slippery. Dude, I did the same thing off the the, <laughs> oh, the, oh, the single down. I had a moment and I almost went off the berm and you Fuck. don't see it and I had the drone follow me. So I'm like, just get your shit together. Like, like <laughs> it, it never happened. But yeah, that was... There's little tweaks that they got to do. Like I literally spoke to him about that. The, I said, you got to make it grippier. It's, like it's it, fucking sick that it's this thin. <laughs> it's, but I can't hang on to the gun. Yeah, you, dude, skeg pegs, dude. Our boy in Sunny Coast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw like what Levi Kitchen was wearing. Like, honestly, yeah. there needs to be something just to hold my feet on. Yeah, we spoke about, um, I mentioned it to him on the day, about making almost like a rock climbing yeah yeah you know and just yep. mold it into the plastics and then you have a little spot that you can kind of well, make some adjustment that was rad being involved with the ktm like i think it was eight, 17 18 19 design I, I or even the latest not 23 but i was d- designing the plastics with that and dude they're they, oh they're so good dude because yeah the clay you mold like the, cl- the clay molds like everything we got to do like they come out and hand hand sand things and then they yep. measure like people don't realize that the amount of time that goes into those molds and like Sebastian's like, Oh, we can put grip tape. I'm like, no, I I'm not factory rider anymore. I buy my gear from MX store. Like yeah, I yeah, can't just yeah. ruin my, my gear, you know, like I got it. I, and I think it'd be better. Like, I think that, um, I honestly think like steak pegs are sick, but they're too much. They're, yeah, they're, yeah. they're for desert use. Like yeah, yeah. you need something subtle that you can, you can overpower. Yep. Like you can chew. It's like subtle enough to lock you in, but you can overpower it by choice. And it's, steak pegs, you can't do that. Yep. You're either fucking it's in or out of It's a hockey puck with a, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, pretty yeah, crude, yeah. you know? It's a fucking door, door stop. <laughs> yeah. But that was my only, like my biggest complaint was how slippery the bike was, but the adapting to it was no brainer. The quick, it was like a 125 light feel. Yeah. It felt as light as a 125 but then the traction of a 450 and man, I, I, my, my biggest worry was where the crew at MX and I were talking about was like how I'm a, you know, think I'm fast still at times and I crack it wide open out of a turn on a 450 and, right, and then I give it too much throttle. So I'll modulate yeah, with the clutch, yeah, rah, 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 yeah. like triple clutch it to keep the front end down. I'm yeah. like, well, what, what if I want to be a meathead on this thing and I gas it and then it loops out and then I let off and then it shuts down and then, I'm doing like a a 16 year old kid through a parking lot learning to drive stick for the first time. Yeah, yeah. Nah, right. Like the the um the feed of that ECU, the way they you can just crack it, and if you have the skill to turn it through a turn, yeah, it just it's like traction control. Yeah, yeah. I was that was you're always in the perfect gear. Yeah, I'm. You're just always in like those double apex turns, you know, where you like have to shift through the yeah, turn. Yeah, done. Yeah, done. Like, I look at what that bike's going to do, um, and it's quite ironic with the way there's so much talk on technique these days with Sexton, yeah, the Lawrence yeah, brothers, yeah, yeah. The, the, the Tomax, like, and Kenny. Like, I think Kenny, Kenny and Tomac really started, and the Lor- Jet and Hunter have really... They've just gone, and Chase. Yeah, They've just Chase, taken it to, like, I'd a weird Chase level. I'd say Chase, actually, Chase and Jet are the le- leaders of, like, unique riding. I'll, we'll talk about that later, but <laughs> I've actually got some theories about it, too. Cool, because... I think this bike is going to allow take, take Sam Hill, right? Yeah. World champion mountain biker rips on a moto. Okay. But he doesn't know um, why am I, I look at why am I still good at 42 on a 125? I know engine. Yeah. I yeah. know RPM. Yeah, yeah. Right. If you take, um, a kid that's 22, that's way faster than my four stroke. He's just used to that bike. Always be in there. No yeah, bog. Yeah. Yeah. Clutching well, the fuck out yep, of it. Sam Hill just like, as a mountain biker doesn't know engine as well as a motocrosser. So he's having to modulate a clutch, but he probably has way better bike handling skills than me. Yeah. Balance, balance. and everything like that. So is he going to be able to get on a Varg and not have to worry about RPM, all these other things and, and have a handbrake yeah. because the technique, Same shit. the technique, the te- technique can completely be changed. So I'm like really excited of like, I never rode the handbrake and I'm, I'm honestly going to say when they can set up a duel, like when they go dual split. They'll be able to easily. Yep. It's, I would run it, mm. you know, and I just, there were, we didn't have enough time on the bikes to retrain my brain. You won't, dude, you won't need it, man. Honestly, you won't need to. Yeah. It, it's like redundant. Yeah. There's I, no, because I, I, I was the first one to do it. I think like two or three other people did it out of the 50. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's a crazy like uh, That's how archaic we are as an industry, A man. research group. Like yep. if you want to take that research pool, there's 
fuck 50 guys so that's six percent of the people wanted to use a handbrake and it's just like to me it was the fucking easiest transition to make there was three laps where i reached with my foot right that's it three laps the rest of the time yeah. but the thing is is i braked with my hand the whole time so every time i reached for my foot i still braked with my hand i didn't lose anything all i did was this extra thing for three laps and then it went away and you know you got the the tabletop and the little rollers yep. and then the right and then the rollers after that dude the corner speed that i was able to carry after those rollers was that was one of the nicest feeling turns that i've ever hit and it, that turn when i back to backed it on the gas gas i'm like how jerky yeah i'm just like fuck cunt can you ride yeah but you get in like i was on the balls of my feet gripping the bike perfectly i was super balanced both my hands were in the exact same position and i was leaning in with just the perfect modulation of like front and rear brake to like tuck my bike into that rut and then I just roll. I had so much finesse with the roll speed. And then I just came onto the throttle with my rear still on that little bit and just track through. And every lap, that is like a really hard technical turn that just got made into a piece of piss. And it was yeah, all man. by just finesse. So you're telling me we'd have more hand feel with a brake with our hands than a big old clumsy boot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like- yeah. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.